welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham sachidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat chari karti bari bharti संजरी हरति लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिलं जगत चरी करति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी आर स्टडीइंग द थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट टाइप्स ऑफ समासस इन संस्कृत नेमली अव्ययी भाव समास बहुव्रीही समास एंड द्वंद्व समास करंटली वी आर फोकस्ड ऑन द बहुव्रीही समास अ यूनिक फीचर ऑफ संस्कृत एज वी हैव सेड बिफोर दिस समास एंड द प्रोफ्यूज यूज ऑफ दिस समास इन संस्कृत डज इंडिकेट सम स्पेशल मेंटल इंटेलेक्चुअल स्टेट ऑफ द स्पीकर्स ऑफ संस्कृत which are ready to form a compound by keeping an outside element as the head of that compound this is extremely intellectual and it is based on the intellectual plane what the grammarians called bauddha satta bauddha artha and bauddha shabda completely detached or partially detached from the external reality the structure of the bahuvrihi samasa can be briefly explained with the help of this following equation on this slide where we have x and y two independent separate elements in terms of the word form as well as the meaning as well as the accent the plus sign in between them indicates that they are interrelated and the speaker of sanskrit has decided to merge them together by joining them together and then the process starts and it ends in the production or the generation of the output in the form of xy which is one unit two units as input one unit as output now this one unit of output can be shown to be interrelated with its constituents namely x y and that is the reason why the status of the one output generated is still retained as x y now x y has got three features namely aikarthya or ekarthata aikashabdya or ekashabdata and aikasvarya or ekasvarata now in the correlation of the constituents as far as the avyayi bhava samasa and the tatpurusha samasa is concerned we showed by the bold characters the element which acts as the head of the newly generated output in the avyayi bhava samasa x was shown in bold characters indicating that x is the head of xy in the tatpurusha samasa in such an equation y was shown with the bold characters indicating that y acts as the head of the tatpurusha samasa output xy as far as the bahuvrihi samasa is concerned none of the two x and y are shown with the bold characters primarily to indicate the very important fact that none of the two act as the head of the samasa in fact the head of this samasa lies outside the samasa that is why this is very peculiar this is very strange and apart from some languages sanskrit 
notable amongst them, there are very few languages in which such a samasa is used profusely, or rather, or rather there aren't any languages where it is used profusely. In English, for example, when a bahuvrihi samasa is formed, one needs to add the morphological element ed to it. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule, but in general, the English structure demands that you add ed after the required constituents. And without that ed, it becomes very difficult for one to identify whether this is a bahuvrihi samasa or not. There are some examples of bahuvrihi samasa in English. However, they are not so big in number as far as the current situation is concerned. But in Sanskrit, they are profusely used as we have seen earlier in the examples of the bahuvrihi samasa. These are some important features of the bahuvrihi samasa. In the Ashtadhyayi, the bahuvrihi samasa is treated at various places. For example, the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras, the compound prescribing sutras, the sutras laying down the conditions for the Bahuvrihi Samasa to take place are from 2 to 23 onwards up to 2 to 28, a very small section. 2 to 23 is Shesho Bahuvrihi and 2 to 28 is Tena Saheti Tulya Yogi. 2 to 29, by the way, is Charthe Dvandvaha stating the Dvandva Samasa. Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutras are stated in the section 54113 onwards up to 54160. We must also note that within this big section, there are some sutras which do not prescribe any Samasanta Pratyaya, but rather they prescribe the Samasanta Adesha. And we shall study this also later on. The Svaravidhayaka Sutras are stated in 6.2. The very first sutra in 6.2.1 states the by default accent of the Bahuvrihi Samasa, which is Bahuvriho Prakritya Purvapadam, which states that the Purvapada retains its own Udatta in the Bahuvrihi compound. And then we have from 6 to 106 onwards up to 120 as well as 6 to 162 up to 6 to 177. In these sections, the accent related to Bahuvrihi is dealt with. So far, we have studied the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras related to the Bahuvrihi Samasa. Now we need to study the Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutras. But before studying this important section, let us spend some time in studying a very crucial, very important phenomenon, a very important process, an important concept, namely Pumvat Bhava, which is stated in 6.3. Since this is also common with Karmadharaya Tatpurusha Samasa, we did not mention it in on this particular slide because it is not exclusive to Bahuvrihi Samasa. So now let us study Pumvat Bhava. What is a Pumvat Bhava? Pumbat Bhava, as the word states, Pumbat Bhava. Pum is masculine, Vat is same or like or as if, and Bhava is the state. So this is the background. A feminine form in Sanskrit is generated by adding a suffix to the nominal root. This is the case with many words. Obviously with some exceptions where the feminine form is generated by adding a particular suffix to the verbal root, but we are not talking about that. We are talking about a feminine form which is generated by adding a suffix to the nominal root. Now, this feminine form goes back to the form of the nominal root. That means it removes the additional suffix which indicates this addition of the feminine part in the meaning. So, a feminine form going back to the form of the nominal root is what is known as Pumbad Bhava. The location of this particular operation is the Purva Pada of a compound, as is clear from the sutra stated by Panini, because they are stated in the Adhikara Uttara Pada. Immediately before an Uttara Pada, in the Purva Pada, obviously, 
what happens is a feminine form goes back to the form of the nominal root. This is called Pumbad Bhava. So, this is stated to the Purvapada of a compound with limited environment existing around, a particular kind of environment existing around, which will be clear in the Sutra that we shall study a, in a while. So, here is a representation of what happens in Pumbad Bhava. So, there are two Padas, Pratipadika plus Stri Pratyaya plus Su, this is the first Pada. And Pratipadika plus Stri Pratyaya plus Su, this is the second Pada. Both of them, both of these two Padas are Subantas and they both have the Stri Pratyaya ending form as the form to which the Su suffix is seen added. This Stri Pratyaya is always added to a Pratipadika in this particular sense. So, Pratipadika plus Stri Pratyaya plus Su plus Pratipadika plus Stri Pratyaya plus Su, this is the internal structure of the two words that will be compounded and this will be the Alaukika Vigraha. Now, in this, since both, they, both of them are Padas and they both are compounded on account of the Sutra stated in the section from 2 to 23 onwards up to 28, the Pratipadika Saudhnaya takes place and so Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoga applies and so we have Pratipadika plus 3 Pratyaya plus 0 plus Pratipadika plus 3 Pratyaya plus 0 as the next step in the derivation. So now we have Pratipadika plus 3 Pratyaya plus Pratipadika plus 3 Pratyaya. The Purvapada has got a Stri Pratyaya and the Uttarapada also has got a Stri Pratyaya. Both of them are added after the respective Pratipadikas. Now, the Stri Pratyaya of the Purvapada is deleted and rather the Pratipadika plus Stri Pratyaya goes back to the Pratipadika. That's why we have Pratipadika plus 0 plus Pratipadika plus Stri Pratyaya. This is the step which is generated on account of the application of the sutra that we are going to study, 6334, and this sutra affects the Pumad Bhava operation. This operation is called Pumad Bhava, and the prakriya continues, but we need not go there right now. We focus on the concept of Pumad Bhava. This is the sutra, 6334. The sutra is Striyak Pumbat, Bhashita Pumskad Anong, Samanadhikarane, Striyam, Apurani Priyadishu. I repeat, Striyak Pumbat, Bhashita Pumskad Anong, Samanadhikarane, Striyam, Apurani Priyadishu. Let us try to understand the sutra word by word first. Striyaha is Shashti Ekavachana 6 slash 1 of the word Stri which means in place of a word denoting feminine gender. Pumbat. Pumbat is an indeclinable avyaya. What it means is like a nominal root. This is the first and most important and major part of the sentence. Striyaha Pumbat. In place of a feminine form, replace it with a form which is like the masculine form. So, Pumbat is like a nominal root form, Pratipadika. Now, this Striyaha has got some qualifications and they are stated in the next few words. Bhashita Pumskat, this is Panchami Ekavachana 5 slash 1, which means immediately after the word which is a Bhashita Pumska. Now, what is a Bhashita Pumska? Bhashita Pumska is a word which denotes the masculine gender. That is the literal meaning. Bhashitaha Puman Yenasaha Bhashita Pumska. But what is so special about it? The speciality is that a word which also denotes masculine gender along with feminine. That is what is known as Bhashita Pumska. What it in a nutshell means is that a word denoting all gender. 
that is a word which denotes a quality or property that is a word which is an adjective that is what it comes down to that is what it boils down to bhashita pumsk bhashitaha puman yena samanayam akritau ekasmin pravritti nimitte sa bhashita pumskaha shaptaha this explanation also adds one semantic stability or semantic correlatedness namely samanayam akritau ekasmin pravritti nimitte the pravritti nimitta the purpose of its uses usage in both the cases must be the same samanayam akritau ekasmin pravritti nimitte yah bhashitah yena bhashitah puman sah bhashita pumskah shaptah this is the idea of bhashita pumska now the next word is anung incidentally according to the traditional commentators this word is in the shashti ekapachana or 6/1 but the vibhakti is not seen but still it is in shashti ekapachana <clears throat> what it means is in place of a word which does not end in the suffix ung ung is a feminine suffix stated by panini in 4.1 so the stri pratyanta shabda should be such that it should be a bhashita pumska and it should not end in the suffix ung stated to denote the feminine gender in 4.1 now the tradition says that bhashita pumska ad anung this is one word bhashita pumska ad anung ung which is not added after a bhashita pumska and then this is a shashti ekavachana which qualifies striyaha so the stri pratyaya should be such that it does not end or it is not ung which is added to a bhashita pumska word now let us go ahead with the next word samanadhikarane this is saptami ekavachana 7/1 which means immediately before an uttara pada which is co referential samanam adhikaranam yasya saha or tat the next pada is striyam also 7/1 of stri which means immediately before an uttara pada which denotes femininity and finally apurani priyadeshu this is 7/3 saptami bahuvachana which means immediately before an uttara pada which one does not end in the purana suffix and two which does not belong to the group of words that begins with the word priya etc apurani priyadeshu having put all these things together we get the following meaning of the sutra immediately before an uttara pada that is in the purva pada in place of a word one whose nominal root or pratipadika is such that it declines in all three genders denoting the same core meaning and two which does not end in the suffix ung ending in the feminine suffix such apurva pada in such apurva pada is placed i mean the stri pratyanta form in such apurva pada is placed to its nominal root form so in place of this stri pratyanta word is placed its nominal root or pratipadika form if one the uttara pada is co referential with it two when it denotes the feminine gender and three it does not end in the purana suffix and four it does not belong to the group of words which begins with the word priya this is the meaning of 6334 i repeat immediately before an uttara pada that is in the purva pada in place of a word whose nominal root is such that it declines in all three genders denoting the same core meaning 
and 2 which does not end in the suffix ung ending in the feminine suffix is placed its nominal root or pratipatika form if 1 the uttaravada is co-referential with it 2 it denotes the feminine gender 3 it does not end in the purana suffix and 4 it does not belong to the group of words which begins with the word priya i repeat immediately before an uttarapada uttarapade that is in the purvapada in place of a word whose nominal root or pratipadika is such that it declines in all three genders denoting the same core meaning bhashita pumskat and two which does not end in the suffix ung anungaha in the feminine suffix striyaha is placed its nominal root or pratipadika form umbat if the uttarapada is co-referential with it samanadhikarane and it denotes the feminine gender striyam it does not end in the purana suffix apurani and it does not belong to the group of words which begins with the word priya apurani priyadeshu the sutra can be represented in the form of an equation in this manner the input is a pratipadika plus stri pratyaya this is one pada plus pratipadika plus stri pratyaya this is the second pada now the first stri pratyaya in the first pada is marked with the bold characters and this is where pumad bhava takes place the first stri pratyaya is deleted in effect so this first pada goes back to its pratipadika form so we have pratipadika plus zero plus pratipadika plus stri pratyaya this would be the output generated To explain it further, we can say that the first Pratipadika is Bhashita Pumska and there is a Stri Pratyaya which is not Ung, Ung. Plus, the next Pratipadika should be Samanadhikarana plus Stri Pratyaya which is not Purana and it is not Priyadi. When this is the input, the output would be Bhashita Pumska plus 0 plus Samanadhikarana Pratipadika with Stri Pratyaya which is not Purana and nor Priyadi. This is the output. Let us take an example. The meaning to be denoted is one who possesses colored cows. Chitraha Gavaha Yasya Saha. This is the Laukika Vigraha. Here we have Chitraha and Gavaha as words in the same Vibhakti namely Prathama Vibhakti and they are interrelated because Chitraha is the Visheshana of Gavaha. Cows are coloured so the word Chitra or Chitra does indicate, does give us some additional information about the cows. So now the word Chitra refers to colour or coloured element or entity so this is not exactly referring to a dravya, this is referring to a property or guna and therefore this word can be declined in all the three genders and then still this is called bhashita pumska. Right now the word chitra also ends in stri pratyaya but this stri pratyaya a is added to the pratipadika chitra which is a bhashita pumska word. So chitraha is Purvapada, Gavaha is Uttarapada and this Uttarapada is Samanadhikarana with Chitra and this Uttarapada does not have any Purana Pratyaya or it doesn't end in the Purana Pratyaya and it is not part of the Priyadi Gana and so having all conditions fulfilled we have Chitra plus Jas plus Go plus Jas as the Alaukika Vigraha, Samasa Saudhnya takes place, Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place, so we delete both the soups. So we have Chitra plus 0 plus Go plus 0 and then we apply the Pumad Bhava operation here. So Chitra is related to Go in 
such a manner which fulfills all the conditions stated in this particular sutra. And so Pomad Bhava happens and Chitra goes back to the form of the nominal root to which was added A in order to derive Chitra. So now we have Chitra plus Go. And then Chitra Go is joined together. And since this is a Bahuvrihi Samasa, we have Go Striya Rupa Sarjanasya, a sutra, which shortens the long O. And H. Aik Rasvadeshe tells us that the Rasva of O is U. And therefore we have Chitra Go as the finally derived Bahuvrihi Samasa output. Now we have Chitragu plus Su as the next step of derivation. And so we get Chitraguhu, which means Gopala, Chitraguhu Gopala. A cowherd who possesses colored cows is Chitraguhu Gopala. Now Gopala is masculine and it acts as the head of the compound Chitragu. Neither Chitra nor Go act as the head, as is the practice of the Bahuvrihi Samasa. Here, the explanation now is, the Purvapada is Chitra in feminine. This is formed by adding a feminine suffix Taap, namely A, to the Pratipadika root form Chitra. Chitra means colored, is a word whose core meaning is the same, namely the property of being colored when it is used in all three genders. That is a very basic solid fact. Chitra is also an adjective, so it can be termed as Bhashita Pumska. Also, the word Chitra does not end in the suffix Om, which is a feminine suffix. So we see that the conditions for the applications of 6.334 on the Purva Pada are fulfilled. And so, now the Uttara Pada also it is to be checked. The Uttara Pada means cow. The word is go. It denotes feminine gender. It is co-referential with chitra or colored as both the words are referring to the same set of cows and it does not end in the Purana suffix. Neither does it belong to the group of words that begins with the word Priya. So, all the conditions on the Uttarabhada for the application of 6334 are also fulfilled. And so now, the Purvapada, chitra in feminine, goes back to its Pratipadika, that is nominal root form, namely Chitra. This is what is known as the Pumvad Bhava operation. Pumvad Bhava. Let us take another example. This is taken from the Vayakarana, Siddhanta, Kaumadi especially. Now the word conveys the meaning, one who has a beautiful wife. The Laukika Vigraha would be Rupavati Bharya Yasyasaha. Rupavati Bharya Yasya Saha. Now, the Alaukika Vigraha of this Laukika Vigraha is Rupavati plus Su plus Bharya plus Su. Now, this is a Samasa, so it gets the Pratipadika Saudhnya and then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoha applies and deletes both the subs. So, we have Rupavati plus 0 plus Bharya plus 0. Now, in this case, Rupavati is the Purvapada, Bharya is the Uttarapada. The Pradhanya belongs to the Anya Padartha, which is Purusha. Neither of Rupavati nor Bharya act as the head of this particular compound. Now the next point is that Rupavati is a form which denotes feminine gender. And this is derived by adding the feminine suffix E to the form Rupavati. And then... Rupa Vati is denoting a particular quality, Rupa, that is the quality that it denotes. And so it is in Bhashita Pumska type of words, group of words. And it is also ending in Sri Pratyaya. The Uttarabhada is Bharya. This is Samanadhikarana with Rupa Vati. This is also a Sri Pratyayanta Shabda. And this word Bharya does not belong to the group of words beginning with Priya. And so all the conditions are fulfilled and we get Rupavad Bharya as the next step which incorporates the Pumbad Bhava done so far. And so we join them together and we get the finally derived compound output namely Rupavad Bharya. When we use it in the sentence, we add the suffix Su and we derive the form 
रूपवद्भार्य रूपवद्भार्य पुरुष द एक्सप्लेनेशन इज द फॉलोइंग हियर द पूर्वपद इज रूपवती विच इज इन फेमिन दिस इज फॉर्म बाय एडिंग अ फेमिन सफिक्स नीप दैट इज ई टू द प्रातिपदिक और नॉमिनल रूट रूपवत द सूत्र इज उगित Now, Rupavat, meaning having beautiful form, is a word whose core meaning, or pravritti nimitta, is the same, namely the property of being beautiful, when it is used in all three genders. There isn't any change, so it is an adjective. So it can be safely called as bhashita pumska, and then it is not ending in the suffix um. So the conditions for the applications of six three thirty four on the purva pada. Are fulfilled. Now let us look at the uttarvada. The uttarvada means wife. The word is bharya. It denotes feminine gender, and it is co-referential with rupavati, having beautiful form. As both the words are referring to the wife, and it does not end in the purana suffix the uttarvada. Neither does it belong to the group of words that begin with the word priya, etc. So all the conditions on the uttarvada. For the application of six three thirty four are fulfilled, and so, therefore, the purva pada rupa vati in feminine goes back to its feminine pratibhika nominal root form, namely rupa vat. This is what is known as the pumbat bhava. To summarize, pumbat bhava is a peculiar operation stated to the purva pada of the bahuvrihi samasa. It requires both the purva pada as well as uttara pada as its conditions, and then what is the necessary condition? The necessary condition is that they both should be denoting the feminine gender as well as the same referent. This is the basic condition for the pumad bhava to take place. To summarize again, in addition, there are. Certain other conditions that the purva pada has to fulfil, and we have discussed them just now. And certain other conditions that the uttara pada has to fulfil, and we also noted these. When all the specific conditions are fulfilled, the feminine form in the purva pada goes back to its pratipadika nominal root form. This is what is known as the pumbad bhava. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.